history for you today from Cookstown, our first live stream in the Ulster Ladies Ulster Schools and it's a final and look at that girl in the middle there with her back to you with a bobble hat that's Joanne Barrett now what a predicament for her today she's gone in there to the huddle with the team but I wonder if a little bit of her heart is with the other team here that team she is with is Assumption Grammar so she teaches there but she was a pupil at Loretto Grammar and she was on teaching practice there as well she's a Tyrone senior as well and she is with the Drumra club in Oma as is the likes of Neve Woods there as well so that's where she's from she is a Tyrone girl up in County Down with the County Down team playing against Loretto Grammar in this final so you see the banner in the background there the girls from Oma have got a few banners up around the ground here strategically placed for the game and we're really looking forward to this now we had lovely sunshine there for about an hour now it's gone quite dull I'm afraid but doesn't matter good location bit windy but never mind that girls really looking forward to this game fantastic talent out there today so it's got a bit dull and a bit um, sort of dark and actually in the last couple of minutes here but don't worry about that it'll be a cracking match between these two teams it's the MFC Sports they're the sponsors the Ulster under 16 B final and we are at the Mid Ulster Sports Arena in Cookstown you can watch on Facebook and on YouTube as well and on Facebook of course feel free to leave me a few messages and tell me where you're watching the game from or good luck messages to the girls that kind of thing feel free to do that on the Twitter page for Loretto, Loretto Grammar their tagline if you like says making young dreams possible and that's what today is about those girls are right there for this game you see the MFC sponsor in the foreground there and to the left and right there's lots of flags and a big crowd here and Assumption Grammar actually have brought two buses 120 girls have come along to watch this game two all girls school so that's what I'm saying girls might be an odd boy here I'm not sure so that's Loretto Grammar but on this side where our camera is and the sun if it comes out will be behind us there's plenty of crowd to the left and right and I do see some fellas along here I'm sure they're supporting their younger or older sisters that kind of thing so what we're going to do is right now we're going to go through the teams for you so we're looking at Assumption Grammar there so we'll go through their team and goals it's Rachel Trainer. she's from Downpatrick and there's the uh, sponsor logo about to get in place for the throw-in at the start that's Ronan McCarthy from Ulster Ladies putting that out in the middle the referee there is Brian McGinn from Killy Clower in Tyrone and must be related to Noel McGinney looks a spit of him and on the left there the assumption captain coming in there is Kira McGill and she is from uh, Carrie Duff so she's uh, out there at the moment and she's getting her photograph taken and the other captain from Loretto in the blue is um, I'm trying to find my notes now it's Bree McBride so those the captains out in the middle of the pitch with Rona McCarthy and with the referee for the start of the game and to get the obligatory photograph taken and that's Kaylin there taking a picture for the sponsor as well so the scene set here I'll go back to the team now for you I started with Assumption Grammar Rachel Trainer and goals she only went into goals for the first time ever in the semi-final that was her first ever game of goals so this is only her second ever so she's in there in front of her at number three is Cara Trainer also down Patrick but no relation number two for Assumption Grammar is Orla McCall four is Olivia Sharvin and that's an interesting one she plays Camogie for Khalif and doesn't actually play ladies football for a club at all yet here she is a cornerback for Assumption today and talking of assumptions I am assuming that the team are going to play in this 1-15 to maybe changes at the start but this is the numbers we've been given so we'll watch that from the throw in number five is Emma McLaughlin from Castle Wellham and her sister Alana her younger sister is on the opposite wing so that's where they are and in the middle it's Bavin Rogan uh, from Tucana who is at number six in midfield you have Ashling Wojciechek from Carried Off and also from Carried Off the captain Kieran McGill who I also mentioned at uh, right half forward at number 10 you have Cora Croscory 11 is Tara O'Neill 11 you have Anya O'Neill 13 is Emma Deegan from Downpatrick 14 is Cara Donnelly and 15 is Ashling O'Connor and for the OMA team for the Red Oak 
you have Aaron Harvey in goals, two is Hannah McCarney, three is Roisin Lynch, four is Nicole Michael Hatton, five is Eve Taig, six is Bree McBride, their captain, seven is Evie Gallagher. In midfield, you have Shauna McCrory from Oma, Emer McCanny also from Oma, and at number 11, Emma McCrossan from Oma, and 12 is Anya Strain from Oma, so the diamond there, all from Oma. 10, Louise Wiley, Kelly Bahar, 13, Kelly McCaffrey, Eric O'Kearon, 14, Gronje Cassidy, and 15, Avian Gallagher. So those are the teams. Captains have done the toss. Referee is ready. Midfielders are out in the middle there. And the referee is just waiting for a ball to be thrown in, and then we can start. I'm just checking the numbers there, because sometimes they mix up the numbers in the middle of the field. So we get a clear sight of the game here now the cameras on the girls in the middle and the camera might be a little bit shaky today because it's got very windy in the last five minutes so patter will be trying to strap that down and keep it on a level for you but it has got windy and a bit dark here in the last 10 minutes or so but apart from that we're all set for what should be a terrific contest referee still doesn't have a ball can't start without that just looking around to see if there's any other changes but i don't see any others just at the minute that may unfold as the game goes on there's the ball now, it was Paul Murphy, the manager of Assumption Grammar, booted it out there very accurately and he's a former carried off player so you'd expect that, carried off man there in charge of Assumption. So, little bit of history, the first schools game that we're doing a live stream on, the MFC Sports Ulster under, under 16 B final, Loretto Oma in the blue against Assumption Grammar in the white and we are off and running in the middle of the field there that is Emma McCrossan number 11 who's moved in there from midfield who won the first ball but it's going to be cleared now and up on to the right hand side and I'm expecting a lot of ball down this side because that's the way the wind is going so the wind quite strong there in the referee spots a free and that will be an early chance of a score a little bit of distance out but assumption could get the first score. They must have won the toss and opted to play with the wind, I would imagine. And that one goes to the right though, hard to judge in the wind. And it goes off a bit wide, so no score so far, but you'll see how difficult it is for the goalkeeper here getting this ball out. Actually, no difficulty at all for her. That's a brilliant kick out there by Erin Harvey from Fintana. There's three girls from her club in the starting 15 that we had for this match. So Fintan have a good representation there. Oma St. Dennis of four. This is Alana McLaughlin. And this is Assumption now on the attack. And that's Cara Donnelly there. But she is blocked down. She's surrounded by blue jerseys. And this is Cora Crossgory on her left foot. And that one goes wide as well. So two early wides. But you see the pattern of the game early on. The wind is having a big effect. It's coming up my back as well. So you can expect assumption grammar to be on the attack for most of the first half so it's going to be a tricky first half for Loretto another good high kick even into the strong wind there and it was a good strong kick so it got good distance but it's coming right back again and that pass is perfect actually and it's Emma Deegan who's in there and she puts it over for the first score of the game it was well made. I think it was Kieran McGill, the captain, who got that pass through. Managed to get through a lot of jerseys there. A lot of traffic in there. But Deegan still got through for the first score of the game. Cousin of Lara Deegan, by the way, who's in the subs. Right, that's a brilliant kick out again because it's found Louise Wiley from the Kelly Clocker Club. And Louise now on her right foot tries to get it up. But you see again the difficulty just trying to get the ball up the pitch. Referee gives a free though. So Loretto will get a chance again. That's nicely played by Eve Tague, the free into safe hands there. And this is the furthest that Loretto will get up the field. But again, the ball just doesn't carry. It's very hard to judge it. And defenders are just nipping in there. But that's good tackling. That's good work by Gronje Cassidy, another of the Finton the players. And this is Emer McCanny. And McCanny does good work. And this is better from Loretto. This is more like them. Well, they're playing, as I say, under a strong wind. And you see the effect of it there. And that probably would have gone over the bar on an ordinary day. But it's held up. Still a chance, though, because this is Evie Gallagher from Dermra. 
And this is Anya Strain now from Oma St. Enders. And this is Gronya Cassidy. And a chance now for Emer McCanny. And she shoots. It's gone left. It's gone wide. But that's much better from the Loretto. Referee holding it up a little bit here. And he's also stopping his watch. I'm not quite sure what the hold up is for but he is talking to the assumption sideline I wonder I don't see an injury anywhere I'm not quite sure what this is for oh, it's a goalkeeper maybe it's something like a gum shield or something actually it's to get a different jersey on of course because she's wearing a jersey that's similar to the opposition jersey so he's making her change so I am going to be checking on Facebook and I want to know if you're watching under the desk at work or you've got your phone out wherever you are and uh, trying to keep contact with this game. That's good work by Emma McLaughlin from Castle Wellen for Assumption. She's the number five. Her sister is the number seven. This is the number six. That's Bavin Rogan from Taconnacht. Actually a forward, but uh, has been moved back because she reads the game so well the ball into the forwards there and it doesn't stick but it might still end up in a, an assumption ball and real scrap for possession there you see the Loretto grammar signs in the background they are out here in force supporting the team today free out for the Omasco taken quickly and taken well because Emer McCanny is in a little bit of room she's one of the vice captains Tyrone Minor and her dad Eddie would be very well known around Oma as well and indeed Drum Quinn but comes to nothing. Lots of messages coming in on Facebook, so I'll get to those as soon as I can. Don't worry if we get a break in play, but there haven't been many breaks in play. It's been all action so far. Low scoring, but that could change at any moment. This is good work by Kira McGill, the captain, leading from the front, the engine of the team. She got a great goal in the quarterfinals and now they're looking for a goal today and going through there it's number eight was a check but good defending by Loretto they'll be happy with this so far only conceding the one score in the first five minutes against the strong wind and there's signs that they are starting to get to grips with the wind themselves because Kelly McCaffrey has the ball now speeding down the right wing and I mean speeding there's no catching her she is a flyer and she is gone deep into enemy territory and is very unlucky to see that one come off the post. It's come back into the play. She gets another bite at it and eventually the ball has gone over, but a really good effort from her. On Facebook, Anne-Marie Scally says good luck to Assumption Grammar. Thank you for that. Kick out now by Rachel Trainer, And Rachel with her new white jersey on. Good kick out for a girl that only went into goals for the first time ever in the semi-finals. So this is only her second game to play in goals. And Anya O'Neill did well as well, but she's going to have to do it again. This is Anya. She got three goals in the semi-final from Castle Wellen. And she's involved again and just leaves it off to Crosscurry. Crosscurry is a down Kamogi minor player, also from Castle Wellen. And she is going to take this. She's a lefty. Good accurate left foot. Although, as they say that, it just goes over the head of number eight, Ashling Wojciechek, and it's Loretto coming away with it. That goes over the end line, though. Tina Malloy says, good luck, Maura Doran from Sigerson's, Stravan Sigerson's, that is, that is. She says, enjoy the experience. I'm sure they are. And there's a good long kick but again that's the danger if you have the window it carries a little bit further than you intended and then Loretto were able to pick it up so it's not not, not much use having the strong wind if you don't use it accurately and there's a few balls that they just hit a little bit too hard and it's gone beyond the forwards now this is McCanny for Loretto she drives forwards that's Gronje Cassidy, 14, and cleverly laid off, and she's going to look to get it back, but it's not going to get there, but it will be a free to the Tyrone School, and the referee will want to take a bit of a tick for that. 
Moira Gallagher says good luck to Loretto girls. Yvine Gallagher gets a mention as this kick comes in. They haven't had a score yet. Nearly had one, but well fielded there by Rachel Trainer. Watched it all the way. And that's a great clearance as well. Right down in front of us, and it's kept in very well too by McGill, the captain. Her brother John is a down senior footballer. This is Anya O'Neill, looks for McGill again. And they combine really nicely to get down the wing, but good discipline tackling as well from the OMA defence. And that I think is, is that McCrossan who's back there? It is, yeah, she's wearing 11, but she's playing very deep there, playing around midfield, but when she gets it, she goes forward really well, and that's her bursting forward now, and she's got support off the shoulder from McCanny. She uses it and gets it back, McCrossan, those two OMA girls there. This is Avine Gallagher now going through, and she blasts it to the top of the net. The first goal of the game against the wind, brilliantly taken. She's a Tyrone minor, and you can see why. She's from Neve Owen, Newton Stewart. Brilliant finish, made in Oma, but definitely finished in Newton Stewart. First goal of the game in the ninth minute. What a finish. And she just got a mention there on the Facebook from Moira Gallagher, so I'm sure you're delighted with that finish by Avine there. So an early goal for Oma against the wind as well. That could be very telling, but here come Assumption now with Rogan, and this is Crossgury. This is Cara Donnelly, the full forward from Carrie Duff. She's used to scoring plenty of goals. She's a long way from goal at the minute no, though, and this is a very, very good Loretto defense. And indeed, that play has held up, though it will be a free in. I said Cara is free scoring. Her lowest score, her lowest so far, has been 3-3. She hasn't scored less than 3-3 in a game so far. And in one game she scored 6-3. Her dad is Shane involved with carried off and a Fermanna man. But no chance really to shine so far today. No sign of the 3-3, but it looks like she might need it because well, her team will need it because Loretto have a very good defence. You can see that. Very disciplined and very organised in there. And they've obviously dropped players back because of the strong wind in there. But this is good play by the centre half back there. Captain Bree McBride from Glenelly. She caught that ball from the free and she's getting involved again. But Assumption come again. And this is Donnelly who tries to leave it off and is fouled. So that will be a free in. Lorraine McCartan says good luck to Olivia Sharvin and all the girls. Anne McGinn says, come on, Assumption. Sean Gallagher says, good luck, especially my niece, Cara Donnelly. Rion McKenna as well gives a little bit of support for the girls who have just scored a point. Breeze Wall says, good luck to Loretto. Sally McMenamin cheering for Loretto. As is Laura Rose Barkley Elliman watching from NUIG. That's Galway, and we're doing a live stream in their game later on tonight against DCU in the O'Connor Cup, so good to have you watching from Galway, and you might be watching again later on. Loretto on the run again, on the march again, going forward with Kelly McCaffrey, and she puts it deep into enemy territory, looking for Cassidy, but it doesn't stick. It's going to come back out, and that's going to go over the end lane. I would think she's going to keep it in. No, actually, she does keep it in. That's good work by Emma Deegan. And she's speeding off, looking for the return, and she gets the return, and it comes from Olivia Sharvin. And Sharvin is combining well here along the right-hand side, and now Koroskari gets involved, and now Anya O'Neill. This is better, but look at that discipline defending in there. They're back in numbers, and they're forcing the shot from distance, which goes wide, so it's going to plan so far for Oma. Against the wind, they must be very, very pleased. 12 minutes in, they're actually a point in front, and it is a strong, significant wind. Now the goalkeeper trainer has been good with her kickouts, or rather this is Harvey, sorry, I'm at the wrong end, that's Erin Harvey with the kickout, this time though it's going to come back at her pretty quickly you would imagine, but good defence again by the blue shirts, now they keep giving away frees, but they've been very solid in there, they are being punished, but there's been no goal chances so far, which is a little bit of a surprise, bearing in mind, assumption are free scoring. Riley Neeson wishes good luck to Maura. Stephanie O'Kane says good luck Evie. And Loretto gets stuck in. Sheila McVeigh says good luck to Assumption. And Brona Stratton-McCubrey says good luck to my niece Emma D and Assumption. 
That's the equaliser. Anne Murphy says good luck to Assumption. Claire McConnon, good girl, Aving. Referring to a brilliant goal a moment ago, as does Moira Gallagher, of course. <laughs> Thank you for that again. And Una says well done, Aving. Good luck to Loretto. Orla McKeever, good luck to Assumption. And all the Carrie Duff girls, there's certainly plenty of them out there for Assumption. Aaron Johnson sends her wishes as well, as does Maria Rogan. Good luck to Assumption and our girl, Baving. That's from Mum. Thanks for that, Mum. I hope you're enjoying the coverage. I wonder you're watching from. Are you in the kitchen? Are you at work? Are you sneaked into an office that's not used to watch the game? This is number 10, Cora Crossgory now for Assumption. And this is Donnelly. Look at the number of blue shirts around her. So she goes for the pass, opts for that, but it's intercepted. And the Loretto team you have to say have been very impressive so far against the wind they've been very organized and disciplined in the first 13 or 14 minutes and when they come forward they look dangerous as well and that's a great ball into Cassidy Cassidy turns away she's got close attention from Cara Trainer, but they're through again and this is McCaffrey on her left foot goes wide but a really good move into the strong wind you have to say we have a Canavan watching online and of course that lets me mention Erigal Kieron because Kelly McCaffrey there number 13 is from that club in fact her uncle Eamon McCaffrey played for Tyrone I'm sure some of you will remember him he was a very stylish footballer that's good work by Shauna McCrory for Loretto Oma getting into the play there extremely well leaving it off to McCrossan and this is Louise Wiley and Louise puts a lovely dangerous ball in there they've got in behind and it's another goal chance and it's McCaffrey who went for it but it was well saved by Rachel Trainer. danger signs here for Assumption they're only level with this strong wind they could be up against it in the second half if they don't get a score or two on the board Rhiannon Blaine says come on Assumption and Cara Leonard says go on Ronan Strain's sister and this is McCaffrey again looking for the pass into the middle but it's well read there by Emma McLaughlin an intercepted keeper comes out she's wearing the white shirt if you've only just joined us she had to change from her blue shirt so she looks like an outfield player but she's definitely the goalkeeper and that's a good pass and brilliantly taken by Anya O'Neill she's been busy on the right hand side and now on the left as well they're trying to measure the build up this is much better instead of just bombing it into the forwards because then the wind carries it a little bit too far Oh, and the captain, Bree McBride, got in there for Loretto from Oma. Didn't get the ball, but did enough to spill it. Two number sixes involved. And there's the number 11, actually, Tara O'Neill, player of the match in the semi-final. So Assumption building patiently, but it's intercepted there by Nicole Michael Hatton, number four for Loretto. And they do seem to be the team with a little bit of edge, shall we say, playing into the wind as I keep mentioning which is very very difficult but they're making light of that and they're going for goal again with Cassidy she's held up and comes back to McCaffrey but those two are doing a lot of damage shot just goes to the right but they are certainly piling on the pressure and holding their own and we now have a water break after 16 and a half minutes and that'll give me a chance to get to your Facebook comments and messages and if you're wondering if you don't know and you're thinking did they not get rid of the water breaks last week? Well, they did for men's football and hurling, but ladies' football still have them, as do Camogie. In fact, I think Camogie's ended on the 1st of February, which was yesterday, but I think ladies' football are continuing until the 1st of April if the competition has already started, which sounds like sense to me. Lucy Denver says, good luck, Assumption. Nolene O'Connor says, good luck, Assumption, from the dinner ladies in the windmill restaurant. Nolene, I hope you're making the dinner there and I'm not watching and getting distracted now. Or maybe you have it on on a laptop there in the kitchen. Fiona Kane says, good luck to Assumption Grammar. Cara Bradley says, go on, Kira McGill. That's the captain of Assumption. Dolores Davidson says something similar, as does Kayleigh Poland and Megan Jennings. A lot of support from County Down. One for Tyrone from Cara Leonard and from Emma Crossgory. Good luck to Assumption Grammar. And that's a message from Glasgow in Scotland. And of course, there's a Cora Crossgory from Castle Wellen at number 10. Nula Owens says good luck to Loretto and thanks for being able to watch the game. It's a pleasure. We have to thank the schools for that and Ulster ladies as well. 
Olivia Trainer says good luck to Rachel Trainer and all that assumption. Anna Quinn, good luck assumption, especially all the carried off girls. Karen Anderson, past Loretto pupil and current assumption teacher here. Oh my goodness, mixed emotions there. But she says, come on, assumption. So she's nailing her colours there. And Ada McGinley says, good luck, Loretto, from Mrs. McGinley. And Emily McGoldrick says, come on, Loretto. I think I'm getting to the end of these messages now. There are lots of them, so lots of people enjoying the game. And Megan Pritchard says, good luck to Loretto. So those are all the messages coming in from everybody watching all over the place, from Scotland to Galway. And of course, Balana Hedge and Oma. At the water break, it's level. It's one goal to three points. Goalkeeper has now got a blue jersey again. The managers are for Loretto. I mentioned earlier on one or two of the assumption managers, but for Loretto, it's Joanne McNabb with Christine McCann and Nicola Barber. It's a good long kick with the wind carrying it. And it falls kindly to Anya O'Neill, who very sensibly just holds it up, leaves it back, and they're working the ball through the hands cleverly now. But not many pockets of space there because lots of Loretto girls have got back. Change the angle of attack, and this is Alana McLaughlin trying now. This is where they have difficulty, though, and lots of strong tackling in there. A little bit too strong, says the referee, Brian McGinn. They have a chance now though, this is Donnelly and she comes out looking for it, but she is surrounded. There's a blue wall, but a chance in the end for a point at least, and it does go over the bar. Really well taken, an assumption sneak back into the lead. Good work by Donnelly, but needed support in there and she got it as well. And it was well finished by Wasicek. Great high kick into the wind. I can't believe she's getting such height and distance on those, but it does spill. And it does go kindly for Cara Donnelly. And now there's the ball I was talking about. When you play it in this weather, on in this pitch as well, a 3G pitch, it tends to carry. And there's an example of the ball beating the forward. And Harvey, very impressive with her kickouts into this strong wind. And that's another pinpoint kick as well. And it's found Anya Strain, another of the OMA players. And her dad, Larry, has managed Oma, involved with Oma, and also previously with Drum Quinn, a bit like Eddie McKinney. Anya is a Tyrone minor as well. And good work by the Oma girls, as I say, around the diamond of this team. But this is a Newton Stewart girl. She got the goal, and now she's looking for a point. But I think the wind has got to keep that away from the goals that drop short. And Trainer gets it and does well with her kick out, but actually it's going to fall kindly for Shauna McCrory. McCrory gets it to McCrossan. Two Yoma girls involved, and again, the connection there is that they're setting it up, and again, I thought it went into the net there, actually, but I think it went over the bar okay. Looked for a moment like it was in the net, but the point, I think, was given for that one, so I think it's their first point of the game, so that's 1-1-4, one, one to four and we're level again. Rachel Trainer now. And that's a sensible kick out looking for Eve Tague, or rather for Emma McLaughlin was number five, but it was intercepted. Good pressure for a moment. This is good work by McCanny, and it's McCaffrey again, and that's her second point in a minute. Good pressing from the kick out. And McCaffrey, I think, has got all of their scores so far. So one, two to four, Oma lead going to mention the assumption management as well but we're back in place so we'll do that in a second as the kick goes over halfway you see the strength of the wind there carrying that all the way up to Cora Crosskery which can she profit though look at that tight marking there and hunting in packs from the Oma school but hunting a little bit too aggressively now I can see off camera that Cara Donnelly's trying to get away from her marker and trying to get a little bit of room, but she's been very closely marked in there by Roisin Lynch from Ahiar, and she's the fullback, and she's got support in there. So Loretto have got two players in the fullback line there marking up, and now Donnelly is having to go way left to try and get it, but again, the ball is beating the forward. So the assumption management, you have Paul Murphy, who's a carried-off man, you have Joanne Barrett, who's former Loretto and from Drumra in Tyrone. 
which is a little bit confusing, but she's definitely with Assumption today. Louise Sweeney is there as well, and she won an Ulster title with the school. And Paul McGinn is there. He's a retired teacher. He was with Assumption for 30 years and took teams on his own many a time. And he's here now today helping out. And this is Cara. This is um, the other end. This is Cassidy actually going for a shot, and it trickles to the left and wide. But the Oma School definitely putting it up to Assumption in the first half here. And they will have the strong advantage of the gale force as it's now wind in the second half. Trainer has it now though and punts it up high in the air but good pressing from Oma again and this is Louise Wiley. And she combined there with Gallagher and gets it back and the Oma girls enjoying themselves out there now because this is McCanny and they're finding lots of room and this is Anya Strain. Strain drops the shoulder, goes inside and she's looking to get in but brilliant tackling in there to stop her abruptly and that was really good work by the number seven and that was Alana McLaughlin who did well and now it's a free for Trainer. Goalkeeper's having difficulty whereas the goalkeeper at the other end is finding her players. She's having difficulty here finding an assumption player and you see again there and that's really well stolen and Strain is there and she might benefit and she leaves it off again to the full forward Cassidy that's dangerous and it's more than dangerous it's in the net and it's all from the press it's a second goal for Oma brilliantly taken by Cassidy she's been dangerous all through again it was an Oma girl who set it up who made it but definitely finished by a Fintna girl that gives Oma a significant lead now 2-2 I make it to four points we've actually given Assumption a goal on our scoreboard but uh, it was definitely for Loretto and again it was from the press on the kick out Assumption just having so much difficulty even with the wind trying to find their players sometimes you see teams playing better into the wind and they can spend more time trying to be more accurate this is dangerous again but trainer comes out and gets there before Gallagher and clears her lines and this is better from assumption now because it's reached Kara, Kira McHugh but she has some close attention out there from Shauna McCrory this is Bree McBride the captain with the red headband right in front of the dugout on the far side doing really well there to scrap her possession and leaves it off to Eve Taig but it's turned over this is good work this is McHugh but blocked down again you have to admire the skills of the Oma girls all over the pitch and now they go for the kick over the defence and that's a sensible option on this occasion because it goes to cross Korea and she does get in behind lots of defenders there for Oma but this is a chance maybe for Ashling O'Connor number 11 from the St. John's, St John's club and that's certainly a foul there by Deegan and you can sense that there's a little bit of frustration from Assumption Grammar just at the minute because they are trying their very best but not really getting much reward and O'Neill intercepts there again and this is Strain the opposite number 12 and she comes away with the ball now this is free running from Strain and she's got her head up and looking around and sensibly looks for a bit of support gets it from McCaffrey and she shoots from distance and she's been accurate quite a lot of the time so far but this one just goes to the left and wide Sun is back out again here and we're in the 25th minute it's 2-2 to 4 points and Rachel Trainer is on the ball with the kick out and sends it long and that's Bree McBride the captain just down in front of the camera here he does really well to read it and puts it into the corner and this is Avian Gallagher she got the first goal and Oma after a bit of a shaky start when Assumption Grammar put it up to them they really settled into their game and They've been very, very impressive. This is cross Curry though. The Castle Welling girl goes cross field with her ball. Now the referee's going to hold it up there because there was a player got a bit of a accidental but tough challenge there and has had to go down. 
So, a bit of treatment required there. See the crowd here at the game at the Mid Ulster Sports Arena. 120 have come in two buses from Ballinahinch. There's as much of that over to the left side as well. the management for assumption there and that's Paul McGinn stepping forward there he's seen it all in the school he's actually retired now but he's still helping out fair play to him and he's obviously concerned here for the injury which I think is to Wasichek who's from carried off a down under 16 this year her uncles actually all played in Straban so a few connections between Tyrone and down here and Paul having a word with Paul Murphy a few other connections actually Orla McCall at number two for Assumption Grammar has connections with Kitty Flaher and Dramore although she's in carried off and representing Assumption Grammar here today so a few connections and Wojciechek as well and I think there was one other actually had a Tyrone connection I can't see it just at the minute but there is of course the most interesting one is Joanne Barrett, a Tyrone senior player managing Assumption Grammar. So a little bit of hold up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Facebook and I'm also going to clarify the score. And I'm told that it is actually 3-1 to not 4. And that must have been the one that I saw that I thought was a goal, but the ball ended up behind the goals and I, I thought it looked like it had dropped over the keeper, but it must have sneaked through the bottom of the net and it looked was it over the bar was it under but because it hadn't sat in the net i thought it was only a point and we were fooled by that but that must have been a goal so it's actually three one to four points just checking your facebook messages as why gets to her feet so hopefully she'll be able to continue about 400 devices tuned into this broadcast to this live stream on Facebook it's also on YouTube well, it's been an entertaining game so far with Loretto Oma leading at the minute by six points two minutes to half time but obviously after that break we're going to have a little bit of added time at the end of the first half but feel free to leave your messages on the Facebook comments area there or on the YouTube live chat and we are now back in the play because this is their number eight and that is why should check actually I got that wrong it was number eight for Oma who was down sorry with the blue that was Shauna McCrory who was down injured there apologies for that but she is certainly back on her feet and that's the important thing and this is strain now this is Emer McCanny and that's Louise Wiley and Oma moving really well here and here she comes now Shauna McCrory she has recovered from that injury and leaves it off move breaks down but it was definitely McCrory who was down injured apologies for that her mum was on the way this morning she'll not be happy with me sorry about that but Shauna I'm glad to say is fit and well and able to continue that's the important thing this is even or rather Ashling O'Connor corner forward for assumption and there's another free given away but these frees are a distance from goal so the ball in the hinge school not really profiting from them Sheila McVeigh says Ashling O'Connor who's just on the ball there good luck from all of your Bransford connections Sharon Rogers wants to know the score well we've clarified that now it's definitely 3-1 to 4 points and there's a kick that's going to the left is it going to be kept in it is you know and still a chance here for McGill the captain they come back out and this is McLaughlin McGill again and they work it to McLaughlin once more good patient defending from the Oma school though and when the ball comes into the danger area they fight for it and they win it and that's Anya Strain doing brilliantly there and then bursting away with the ball as well that's good work by her but it's intercepted by Evie or rather by Alana McLaughlin this is O'Connor she's got help there from Anya O'Neill they go wide 
they go to the right, they go to Emma Deegan. And this is back to O'Neill, trying to get space for a kick, and it drops in there, and that's dangerous. Keeper reads it, and it gets it, a touch on it and keeps it away, and there hasn't been much goal action at that area in the first half, despite having the wind advantage. But the goalkeeper, Erin Harvey, did all that was needed. And look where McCaffrey is. She's been doing a lot of the scoring at the other end. Yet she's way back in defence, so the Oma girls really working hard today and now they're bursting out of defense they really have got their tactics well this is hannah mccarney number two taking a chance to go up the field she's from erigal kieron her dad shane was a throne under 21 and so you can see where the ability has come from this is emer mccanny and she gets a free foul there by o'connor referee ticking for that as well Connor starting today, her first start in the campaign. She scored a rocket of a goal in the semi-finals and earned her spot today. This is Eveen Gallagher. Controls it in the end and gives it to Cassidy. This is McCrossan. And Loretto moving really freely. Always seem to have lots of room, or is it the other end? Doesn't seem that way. Great work by Strain. There's a chance here for Shauna McCrory. Blasts it to the net, and that is an Oma St. Enda's goal. Shauna was injured a few minutes ago, but she has recovered well. A Tyrone under 16 in football and in Camogie. She scored two goals in the semi final. She's also the Loretto netball captain, and boy, she can play football as well. Another goal for Oma. They're very much in control here, and they're coming with another attack and that's McCaffrey and she floats it over expertly with that superb left foot and that makes it 4-2 now to 4 they're well in control deep into injury time at the end of the first half and yes we've been clarified that the second point was actually a goal that's the one I was thinking about that uh, we weren't able to see just earlier on but it definitely has been clarified now and it's 4 2 2 not 4 and Oma coming again looking for another one this is McCrossan out to Gallagher she started it all with the first goal but that one has just gone to the right and wide so Assumption have a lot to do 34th minute of the first half this is Trainer, the goalkeeper trying to find somewhere to go but such is the press from Loretto that there's basically nowhere to go and it's been a little bit demoralizing at the end of the first half there for Assumption so the management have a lot to do at half time whereas Loretto there in the blue going over to the far side here at Cookstown are in a much much more comfortable position for their half time team talk they lead and you see there the shake in the camera it's very windy here the wind has picked up a little bit here uh, but we hope you are enjoying the coverage on Facebook. Just before we take a wee break at halftime, Siobhan Gormley says, fantastic, Loretto. Keeper lit against that breeze. Well, they sure did that in the first half. That's been the story so far. But Olivia Trainer says, keep going, Assumption. That's the message for them. Not over yet. Get out there in the second half and see what you can do. So it's halftime here in Cookstown in the MFC Sports Ulster Under-16B final and it's the Loretto in charge at the minute. We will have the full second half for you, so please rejoin us in a few minutes.
Welcome back for the start of the second half here at the Mid-Ulster Arena. A very windswept Mid-Ulster Arena in Cookstown. We are out in a, shall we say, a wide open area. And we are not protected at all from the wind. And the players, more importantly, are not either. And it seems to be going from left to right. So it will be with Loretto, who already have a healthy lead. So it could be a tough second half for Assumption Grammar in the white. McCrossan gets it from the hop at the start of the second half and Strain has gone into the full forward area has left it off beautifully this is a brilliant start of the second half lovely football from Loretto and McCrossan puts it over the bar that is superb football by the Oma girl got it from the throw in put it over the bar as well no wonder she was a 2021 Tyrone under 14 captain and captain of her club as well when they won the county title kick out from Trainer goes high goes right but goes over the end line getting plenty of messages coming in on Facebook big crowd watching all over the place we've had messages from Galway from Scotland and from other people at work even the dinner ladies and people in the windmill restaurant people have got their phones or their iPads you can even watch it on Twitter and on YouTube. So lots of people finding creative ways of watching it. And there's an effort and it goes wide. That looked like it was going to hit the top corner. But a let off there for Assumption. And Trainer comes out with the ball. Trying to get it back into the play as quickly as she can. Because Assumption need to get up the pitch. They survived on that occasion though. 4-3-4. Four, to four. But Oma showed how to play against the wind in the first half. So if they take from that. Might make some headway. Now they go low with the kick out this time, and that's a better one. And it certainly gets into the right hands, although a strong challenge comes in there. And there again, the press all over the place. The Loretto girls are winning their individual battles and putting serious pressure on every assumption player. There's always one or two players there to meet them, and they're not fouling, or at least they're trying to get in and just um, nudge them in the right direction. They're not diving in, so good defending now they've given away quite a few frees in the end but nothing near the goal area and there you see the serious pressure again from the Loretto Grammar players and now they profit from it because they have an attack going on here and that is the number nine McCanny the vice captain leaving it off and it could be a goal at the end of this and she does indeed put it into the top of the net that was all about the press and then on the break, a brilliant break, and they put it into the top of the net. That's a superb goal. You see it again. Bang. From the kick out, they're trying to get another one, but it's Assumption who grab it on this occasion, and this is Cross Curry. And she does really well to just feed it up the line, but McBride is putting serious pressure in there and gets help as well from McCanny, and that just shows you the way the game has been played there, that little cameo and great fighting for possession and it leads to Gronya Cassidy getting the ball in the forwards and she's going to use the wind and put that over scored by Cassidy but it was all about the brilliant defensive work by McBride and McCanny Cara Coyle says come on Loretto on Facebook Leitrim Fontenoy say, say keep going Assumption Kevin O'Rourke says keep it going Loretto doing brilliant they are indeed Heather McKernan Says keep it going, Assumption. This is the fullback, Cara Trainer. The wind has definitely picked up a lot now, so even more difficult for Assumption. And you see the kick there has to be accurate, but doesn't quite reach because of the wind. Strain. Good battling forward by Nicole McElhatton for Loretto Oma. And now McCaffrey is off again on that deadly left foot. She doesn't miss, certainly not when she's got the wind behind her. And Loretto go to 5 5. They're in the clear. Andrea McCall says, Come on, Assumption, let's get back into this. They're doing their best. This is Ashling O'Connor now on the ball from the St. John's Club. And she leaves it off to McGill, the captain. And she is having a battle there with the opposite number nine and Strain in there as well. Very careful not to foul. 
And O'Connor again doing well to break through. And now there's a little bit of room for Donnelly. She's got a bit of space. Not near enough to goal though, but she does head off with intent. Leaves it off trying to get it back. But Donnelly has obviously just not had the room today. She's been up against a very, very disciplined and packed defence in there. Hasn't been able to get a sight of goal. This is Anya O'Neill. Now Donnelly, maybe she will have a sight of goal. She nips in there, but McCrossan is all the way back there, and that will be a free in for Donnelly. A frustrating day for Cara so far. There's best wishes for assumption from the St. Malagy's Rafferty Cup team. Thank you for that. And Lucy Denver as well. So he's keep it going. But you see how difficult it is there. That kick carried by the wind off target. Morgan McConaughey says, Aveen Gallagher has great feet. She <laughs> certainly does. She got the first goal. Siobhan McMenamin says, keep it going, Loretto. And Cian Mulholland was impressed by the last goal. And why not? Into the top of the net. This is McGill, Assumption. Their backs to the wall, and they're well behind on the scoreboard, but they are showing a lot of courage and applying themselves really well. Good play there by Ashling O'Connor, but brilliantly blocked, you have to say, by Roisin Lynch from Ahiar, the fullback. You have to say that the standard of football, certainly all over the 15 for Loretto Oma is very, very impressive and very encouraging for the future for Tyrone Ladies Football, never mind Loretto or even for their clubs. All right, here's a chance for Assumption. They would dearly love a little goal in there, and there might be a goal, but blanket defence in there from the Tyrone School, and they managed to keep that out. Now, there will be a hot ball in there, but they just got so many numbers back there. No way through for Assumption, but... That's as close as they've come to a goal. The referee, Brian McGinn, will hop this one. Emer McCanny in the blue, number nine, is in there. She's been challenged well, though, by Tara O'Neill, and there is still a chance for assumption, but any chance at all that goes a begging, if they spill the ball, it'll be cleared by Loretto. You can take that for granted. This is... McCaffrey off again. She's had such a brilliant game. She's certainly in the running for player of the match. Louise Wiley now on her right foot. Good defending in there, though, by Bevan Rogan getting back. And that was excellent work by her. And here she is again, the girl from Taconnacht. That's why they've repelled that attack, and they're now off in their own attack. She's looking to support it again, and she may be needed again because Olivia Sharvin was bottled up there, and this is McGill spreading the play gone to the right and off camera I can see Cara Donnelly doing great work to try and get room and there she is trying to get involved but she sprinted about 30 yards across there but still just couldn't get to it there because just so many numbers there for Loretto they all know their job and they're all playing really really well and this is McCrossan now that's good work by Emma McLaughlin for Assumption Anya O'Neill now she gets past her marker, gets a little bit of space in front of her, but runs into Hannah McCarney. Gets a free though. And as they wait to take the free, lots of blue jerseys just amble back there. And Anya Strain, the number 12, you see dropping in there deep all the time, although I have seen her at full forward as well. Is why she check and gets it out to Anya O'Neill and her kick comes in from the right. Tough one from there, but it's gone just to the right and wide. So ninth minute of the second half. The goalkeeper is Erin Harvey. She takes her time and then pumps it over to her left. Referee sees the push there, so it'll be a free for Oma, taken quickly by Wiley to McCaffrey. 
McCaffrey gets it in and there's another goal chance maybe here. No, it's intercepted really well there by Alana McLaughlin. One of two sisters in the half back line from the Castle Welland Club. That's Eve Tigg from Dremore doing well there, number five for Loretto, leaving it off to McCanny, who's always available and always busy. And talking about always available and always accurate, McCaffrey, well, nearly always accurate. 5-5 five, five plays, four points. Difficult conditions for both sets of players in this win. There's O'Connor coming back to help her defence. That's good work by the corner forward back there. But it's McCanny yet again. And she speeds off. What a game she has had. And she shoots for goal. Is it saved? And is it kept out? Just about brilliantly done by Rachel Trainer. Had two or three attempts to get it, but she eventually got it in the end. And she keeps her team in the game with a brilliant, brilliant save. And it's only her second ever game in goals. But she looks like a natural. McCrossan as Loretto pile on the pressure. And it's Cassidy. And this time they take their point and Cassidy is really enjoying herself out there in the 41st minute of the game. Brilliant work as you see from McCanny and Trainer did so well. Had one go at it, two goes at it, three goes at it and she eventually cleared her lines impressively. Cassidy under pressure to McCanny. Oh, a lovely popped ball over the top. Nearly got in for a goal but it's Actually, really well defended by Emma McLaughlin. Assumption have only conceded one goal in this half, and they've really pressed, and it's been a 50-50 game, and that's a credit to them in these conditions. Still a long way behind, but they have certainly not given up by any means. McCrossan. She's an impressive player on the ball. You can see she's got a little bit of speed about her and dropping the shoulder. A lot of the Loretto players are a credit to their clubs. This is McCaffrey. She's from Aragal Kieran. Four white shirts around her. She's forced onto her right foot, but sends an accurate kick to Cassidy, and she's put over two or three from there. But this time it has gone to the right and has gone wide. To check your Facebook messages in a minute. I might just wait until we get to the water break in a couple of minutes time. Five, six, place four. This is Trainer, the goalkeeper. And she does well to find Orla McCall. This is Bevan Rogan again. And certainly a tug on the jersey there as she tries to get clear, but does well to get it to Cara Donnelly. Now, Donnelly a long way out from goal, but she can tell that she's a nippy player in there and she gets it again. This is good work by Donnelly and can she get through towards that goal area? She's gonna have her first goal chance of the game, but it's fouled and I fancy that might even be a penalty in there. It's gonna be close anyway. I don't have the height to see exactly where it was, but the referee certainly wa walking towards the area where referees usually put their arms out to signal a penalty. I think he has given it, you know, although he hasn't put his arms out. Or is it a free in? But certainly good work there by Donnelly, as you see, getting past the full back. And uh, she is eventually brought to ground there, and it will be a penalty for Assumption Grammar. Donnelly has scored at least 3-3 three, three in every game. Today, her team could do with just one goal at this moment. top scorer for her team throughout this campaign. She has been deadly, Cara Donnelly, from the penalty. Her team, her school, really need a goal to try and get back into this. She has delivered so far in the competition and she shoots to her right and she took it well, but it was brilliantly saved, you have to say, by Erin Harvey from Fintana with her left hand. She read it really well and got across and made a superb save for Loretto Grammar Oma strain that's liven things up a little bit assumption trying to get back into defense in time and that actually 
There's a superb burst of speed, soccer style here, and there could be another goal, and it's finished to the net, and that could be the end of that. Avine Gallagher got the first goal of the game, and she showed an impressive turn of speed there to latch onto that loose ball, rattled it to the net. She's a Tyrone minor, she's from Newton Stewart, and she has just got another goal for Loretto. Six of the best. You hear the cheering on the far side from Loretto. At one end there, it looked like they were going to concede a goal from a penalty. They survived that and put it in at the other end. And you are tempted to feel that that is the end of that. And poor Cara there took the penalty. Not her fault at all. She took a good penalty, but the keeper just read it well. So disappointing for her. But she certainly won the penalty with great tenacity and skill. So keep the head up there. And they're all telling her not to worry about it. There's 15 minutes here. Carms Mike on Facebook says class from Avine. It was indeed. She just went through the gears there and finished that brilliantly to the net. So feel free to keep your messages coming on Facebook throughout the last quarter. And then we will have the presentation. If we can hold the cameraman down and his camera, as you can see, it's just picked up here. It's gone from windy to gale force. We're going to have to strap him down and his camera here. It's got very, very windy here in Cookstown. We are wide open here in this arena. No protection from the wind, unfortunately, and it is very windy, but we are doing our best. Kelly Morris on Facebook says, fantastic. And Jamie Farrell says, he thought water breaks were out of the GEA. Well, they are in men's football and hurling. Camogie still had water breaks up until yesterday, the 1st of February. And ladies football, I don't think I misread this but or maybe I imagined it but I don't think so I think they're keeping them until the 1st of April so if you're in the middle of a competition you're still going to have them so this competition for example has had them all the way through so that kind of makes sense to me so yes we have a water break and there is assumption there and their management with Paul Murphy and Joanne Barrett and Louise Sweeney and Paul McGinn trying to rally the troops for one last big effort there but they had a penalty there which would have brought them back and given them a chance but Oma went in, saved it, and got a goal at the other end. Chris Nugent says, great going, Oma, keep her lit. And that's Oma over on the far side with their management. Nicola Barber is there with Christine McCann and Joanne McNabb. All female management there, all girls school. And great support as well, as you can see. I mentioned at the start that on Twitter, the Loretto account says making young dreams possible and that seems appropriate I will take contenders by the way for player of the match so if you want to send them through put a comment there on the Facebook coverage and we'll see who gets the most votes for player of the match and certainly there's a lot of contenders from OMA but this is Cara Trainer from Downpatrick doing really well to full back. And this is Olivia Sharvin from Khalif, Camogie player, who, by the way, doesn't have a ladies football club. So someone out there might want to get her signed up. This is Tara O'Neill, number 11, just hands it to Crossgury. This is good work from Assumption, trying to get forward and get a score with McLaughlin. And they're working it through the hands well. Crossgury, O'Neill to Donnelly. Now Donnelly will want to try and make amends for the penalty that was saved and she shoots to the net and definitely does that and boy she enjoyed that one and she deserved that one as well. The uh, penalty was not her fault at all but she was so disappointed. She has been their main goal scorer so far has had a goal in every game. In fact she scored at least 3-3 in every game. Tough defence opposing her today but she still found a way through. Cara Donnelly with a great goal for Assumption Grammar. 6-6 six, six plays 1-4. Will that lift her team? Oh, it's broken over midfield. And Loretto are going to get in behind here again. And that's Gallagher. And we know what she can do when she gets into that kind of position. And it's McCaffrey again. And she swings her left foot at it and just comes off the post. And a little bit of a let off there for Oma. But lovely free-flowing football, you have to say. And you could watch McCaffrey's left-footed play all day long so stylish this is strain who is also very very impressive you have to say 
And just as I say that, she gives the ball away. This is good from Assumption, and for once we have a little bit of room, and this is their 16, this is Grace Lochran. I'm talking about McCaffrey. Grace Lochran actually has connections with Erigal Kieron, although she's now with Carried Off Club and Assumption Grammar School. But she's on the pitch now, so a sub is in number 16. Grace Lochran for Assumption Grammar. And they might be inspired by that goal from Donnelly because they've lifted their game a little bit, Assumption. Now they're going to get a free here, and Loretto very good at fouling. Um, I don't mean to praise that kind of thing because, of course, we don't want to praise fouling, but they are adept at fouling in certain areas, shall we say, and they have prevented Assumption really from getting many sites of goal. As you see, not just in this performance but in many performances in ladies football these days that's kind of what happens a lot Cara Donnelly comes over to say to your teammate I hope you're okay but if you're injured just go down there for a moment and we'll get you some treatment Sharon Rogers on Facebook says come on Loretta Loretto I, pr I, I presume you mean and Rhiannon Blaine says go Cara referring to Cara's goal a minute ago as does Aoife Hanna and Beth Johnson wants a shout out for Aoife Gordon. She's injured and can't play. Absolutely. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read out the subs involved here today. They all deserve a shout as well. For Loretto, 16, Nessa Cameron. In fact, that's who, yeah, the other 16 is on. Grace Lochran. Getting a little bit confused here, but don't worry about it. Uh, Nessa Cameron from Dromore for Loretto is 16. 18, Lynch is 17 from Castle Derg. 18, Mary Kate McBride, Kelly Plaher. 19, Kira Gordon from Loch McCrory. 20, Maura Doran from Strabane. 21, Ellie Leonard from Oma. 22, Alana McMenamin, Drum Quinn. 23, Aoife Wilson, Fintana. 24, Aoife Farley from Berra. And there's Aoife McGillian in there as well from Fintana. And her brother, Connor, is the Tyrone under 20 player and Oma CBS McCrory captain this year. For Assumption Grammar, 16 is Grace Lochran. I'm saying is in the play now. 17 is Lara Deegan from Carried Off. 18 is Emer McAlarney from Lockin Island. 19 is Laura Gilmore from Carried Off. 20 Katie O'Neill, Castle Well, and 21 Katie McCarran and Carried Off. As that kick goes over the bar, and that's their first point of the second half, expertly taken. So you have to admire Assumption here, the way they've applied themselves. That score by Cara Crosscurry, very impressive. 22 Orla Owens from Leitrim. 23, Eve Rice from Castle Wellen. 24, Alana McKay from Dramara. 25, Mary Claire King from St. John's. 25, Kirsten Gormley from Carry Duff. 29, Kitty Quinn from Carry Duff. 28, Eva Hastings from St. John's. 29, Enya Boyle from St. John's. 30, is Kiva Sherry from Carry Duff. 31, is Holly McCullough from Dramara. Two more. 32, is Ella Young from Lockin Island. And 33, is Ruby, Con Ruby Kincaid from Dramara. So that's all the subs getting a mention. One or two of them are getting a run out now as well. We're in the 51st, nearly 51st minute of the game. Loretto winning comfortably, but the Balna Hinch school are giving it everything right to the end of this game. No giving up there at all. You have to admire their attitudes, but it's McCaffrey on the ball as she has been so often and so often and gets fouled on this occasion. Megan Doherty says, Assumption or some team, let's go girls. Thank you, Megan. They are indeed. Despite the scoreline, they've really given an impressive effort and performance here today. And they're building. They'll maybe be back next year. Great work being done in the school, obviously, by Paul Murphy and his team. This is McCrossan. She never wastes the ball. She's always very careful with it and always looks to go forward. And going forward now is Gallagher and her shot goes to the right and goes wide. We're getting contenders now for player of the match, but there's a sub in there. That's 23 is in there for Assumption. And that is Eve Rice from Castle Wellen, an under 14 player. There's so many young players in there, but could be another goal. And it's Cassidy in there, well defended, but a chance in the end for McCrory. And it just trickles over the line and wide. An assumption defense did brilliantly there. 
Cara Byrne goes for Aveen Gallagher for player of the match. Certainly deserves to be a contender and Morgan McConaughey agrees with that. So two votes in for Aveen Gallagher. She scored the first goal of the game and I think she got another one a few minutes ago, didn't she? So she's had a super game. Girl from Newton Stewart. We have plenty of other contenders, so feel free to give us your vote for player of the match. We're coming to that stage. We're in the last 10 minutes here. We mentioned as well later today we're taking our live stream team from here all the way to DCU Sports Grounds in Dublin. And we're doing the Yopley O'Connor Cup match tonight between DCU and NUG. And that one is at 6.30. So a live stream on that on the Ladies Gaelic Football Facebook page. So it's two streams in two different parts of the country. Angela Gallagher has come onto Facebook to say great goal from Cara. It was indeed. And they deserved that. They really did. She deserved it. Her team deserved it. A few subs coming into the play now. And we may need another one now. Because a little bit of an injury there to Orla McCall. And indeed, I'm noticing... A sub coming on is 25 for Assumption Grammar, and that's Mary Claire King from St. John's in County Down. And she's coming in to the play. So two subs in there for Assumption in the last few minutes. Maybe they'll give fresh impetus with their fresh legs. But it's the blue shirts coming again with the pink and yellow trimming. It's Loretto. It's strain. It's brilliant football by them. And there it is, driven over the bar again. And that time it was Emer McCanny, the vice captain at Tyrone Minor. And it is quite a machine here from this school. They are quite an impressive sight when they play free flowing football like that. It goes to 6 7 to 1 5 for Loretto. Might be an award for player of the match at the end, but my contender for it would be our cameraman for holding the camera down in this gale force wind. <laughs> and there's McCaffrey again with her left foot. And that one has gone wide on this occasion. So we're into the last six minutes of the game. As I said, feel free to give me your contenders. I have another one in. Chris Nugent says Emer McCanny, number nine for Loretto. Can't argue with that at all. She's been fantastic. Moira Gallagher. Not surprisingly now, you're voting for Avian Gallagher, but it's deserved. And Aoife Gordon has a vote for the goalkeeper, Erin Harvey. And Donna McChrystal says Kelly McCaffrey from Loretto. Yeah, she has been superb. So a lot of contenders. And Caitlin McConnell goes for Anya Strain, as does Cara Leonard. A little bit of a hold up here. I think it's actually the Loretto captain, Bree McBride, who is injured hopefully she'll be okay to get up and play the rest of the game and then collect the cup and by the way the cup today is an impressive new cup it's a corn mcnally donated by Calastia oriel and it's named after well the three cups have donated actually this is one of them and they're named after well-known families in monaghan so the Corn McNally Cup will be presented at the end of this and I'm glad to say that the Loretto captain is able to continue. Kick out drops to McCanny. And McCanny has been very, very busy in this game and she goes looking for Gallagher and Gallagher shows a clean pair of heels again and comes in with intent and drops that towards the goals but it's gone to the left and has gone wide. 56th minute, four minutes left. Four minutes for Loretto. Kick out is really good from Trainer because it finds the substitute, Eve Rice. And Rice does really well. She's looking for her full back. That's Cara Trainer. It spills, but again, down Patrick giving it everything. But McCrossan has dropped deep as she's done so often to win that one from another of the subs. And that's Katie O'Neill from Castle Well at number 20, who's into the play for Assumption. And that's brilliant play by Louise Wiley. 
speeding down the right wing and now she leaves it off and there's an effort at goal from Kelly McCaffrey but it uh, is gone wide and the player coming off her assumption is Cora Crossgury trainer the goalkeeper from Downpatrick looking to see where she can put this and she looks to try and get it to McLaughlin but it's been intercepted and it's McCaffrey there again but it's easily saved may still end up in the net though and it does end up in the net and the referee blows his whistle but I think he's going to allow it even though the goalkeeper got injured in the middle of all that and it's McCrory with her second goal of the game for Loretto so the goalkeeper Rachel Trainer down injured will maybe get another look at that one as the referee goes in to inspect the damage seems to be allowing the goal though and the keeper has had such a terrific game under such pressure today and it looks like they're replacing the goalkeeper and the kick out though goes straight to Anya Strain and Anya's in and there's another chance here it's Cassidy this time and Cassidy gets her shot away and it's kept out brilliant save by the goalkeeper but it ends up in the net another goal for Loretto and they're piling it on in the last few minutes of the game and on that occasion it was actually the midfielder and it was Shauna McCrory who got in to finish to the net scoreline looks very unfair now on assumption grammar but they're still at it they're still going they get it up to the substitute that is Katie O'Neill Katie leaves it off to another sub that's Eve Rice McBride comes in and fouls last two minutes and it's Rice and that's intercepted there's another break on for Loretto Willie put the icing on the cake that's brilliant play by Cassidy she's been brilliant so has Shauna McCrory leaves it off this is too easy for them and McCaffrey puts it in the net and they are really adding insult to injury they are having a field day out there now in the last few minutes of the game that's three goals in a couple of minutes and assumption are reeling at the moment game over no doubt about that they have given a tremendous spirited effort here today but Loretto are just too good McCanny puts it in there once more and Katie's in there and goals now and she's doing well and gets it out to Emma McLaughlin 60th minute it's been a long second half for Assumption Alana McLaughlin now and still they keep going this is good work by the school from Balna Hinch they're bound to learn from this experience they've come up against a really good team but hopefully they'll come back next year and that ball might just go over the line although Ashling is chasing it or rather Shauna is chasing it crowd on the far side you can maybe hear on the camera can't wait for the final whistle they're preparing to invade the pitch the subs from Loretto we play on though now in added time at the end of this MFC Sports Ulster under 16 B final Great work by the substitute getting at the Cara Donnelly and that's a dangerous ball from her in behind. It could go anywhere. Now it's well defended in the end for the Oma School by Hannah McCarney, the number two in there, but there's a player down and the referee will hold up play for a little bit of attention there. 61 minutes gone now. Just checking your Facebook messages and I will do again at the end of the game substitution by the way off camera that's what the cheering's for because Shauna McCrory number eight has gone off and that means that Loretto Grammar are giving some of their subs a few minutes here and it's number 17 Aideen Lynch from Castle Derg who's come in and she got a great round of applause there to mark her entrance
Lots of contenders for Roma, of course, and player of the match, but Breed Maria McKinney says, well done, Bevan Rogan, assumption defence, come on, assumption, that's a good point. It's easy to pick out all the girls who got all the scores, but defenders have done well too. Avian Gallagher, of course, woman of the match, says Sarah O'Brien. And Chris Nugent, I think I read that one out already. His vote was for Amor McKinney. This is Rogan on the ball now. Looking to get the substitute into the game, but it goes over the line. And Laura Rose Barkley Elliman says fair play Bree. Good sportsmanship. That's the captain. Aaron Johnson says on your strain for player of the match. Free for assumption. Dolores Davidson is pleased to see the subs getting on. Absolutely. Plenty of them coming on now. Lucy Arnold says Avian Gallagher, woman of the match. I think she's had the most votes. Doesn't mean she's getting it though. Now the kick from Donnelly is going to the right and is going to go wide. Una also says Avian Gallagher. And Claudia O'Neill sent a message as well. She's pleased for Loretto. So those are all your messages coming through as we're in injury time here at the end of this game. The 63rd minute off the game. Still not finished though. This is the substitute doing well for Loretto. That was Aideen Lynch getting involved in the play. Might be another score here on a lovely effort too, but it's gone just to the right. I thought that was going to drop into the net off the front of the foot. A punt kick there, but it goes wide. Another sub coming on, I think, for Oma to get a little bit of a run. She can say she played in the final, though we are right at the end of it. And indeed, number 10, Louise Wiley is going off and making way for one of the subs coming in. And I'm trying to see which one it is. It's actually Nessa Cameron from Dromore, number 16, is in the play. Referee Brian McGinn looks at his watch. Apologies for the shaky picture, but it's just <laughs> that there's a gale force wind here in this wide open area. Final whistle goes and Loretto from Oma are celebrating. Their subs come on and celebrate with all the players on the field. Scenes of joy and delight there among their supporters, their subs, their management. And they deserved it. A great day for the Tyrone School. On their Twitter handle, hand, um, it says, making young dreams possible. Well, they've certainly done that today. They have won the MFC Sports Ulster Under-16 Under, Under 16 B Final. Great performance by the girls, convincing winners, and they're getting their photographs taken there. They'll come over and get their cup in a few minutes time, and it is their cup now. That presentation will be done in a few minutes time, so we will hold on for that. Big squad of girls there, and all delighted with themselves, and rightly so, a brilliant performance. They dominated more or less from start to the end. Screams of delight from the girls from not just Oma, but all around that area. In fact, there's three from Fintana. Dramara are involved there. The captain is from Glenelli, getting their photograph taken. But I fancy they'll prefer to get a photograph taken with the cup. That's the one you want. They won the cup. So they'll be coming over now in front of us, and we will have the presentation. And there's a nice hug there if our camera can pick it up to the left there, over by Assumption there, because... Nicola Barber is there. Just There you see her now on the shot. That is Nicola Barber, and she is from the Oma School, and she's hugging Joanne Barrett. And that's because Joanne, although she is with Assumption Grammar, Joanne used to go to Loretto and was taught by Nicola Barber. So she's over commiserating with her and saying bad luck, but what a great game. And that was good sporting play as well by Avian Gallagher, number 15. She went over to commiserate with her opponents. And... Sean McCrory does the same. Good spirit at this game here. And you see the Oma girls coming over. They're gonna make their way over here to get the cup. Whereas the Assumption girls are in a huddle out there getting a few words from their management. No doubt saying, don't worry, you give it everything. We're very proud of you. And so they should be. Presentation is imminent. 
don't think there's a player of the match award, but it's very hard to see who to give it to. There were so many contenders out there for Loretto Oma. Avian Gallagher was fabulous. Anya Strain, Emer McCanny, absolutely brilliant. Emma McCross under the Super Game, Gronya Cassidy, Kelly McCaffrey, Shauna McCrory, and that's only really the forwards, but they all deserve a mention have to give it the one though I'm going to give it to Emer McCanny the vice captain at number nine she just seemed to be everywhere all over the pitch she was supplying the ball for a lot of the scores but definitely involved in just about everything she was a driving force there so I think it's only right we give it to her just checking your messages on Facebook while we have a minute or two to go here until the presentation which is now being prepared. The wind has stopped just for a second, that's a relief. Sponsors are in place as well from MFC Sports. And Ronan McCarthy from Ulster Ladies is doing his best to get them all over to the presentation area here in front of the cameras. Now, the Oma players are setting themselves up, but they're quite a distance away. I fancy they'll need to come a little bit closer than where they are at the minute. Everybody is around trying to get their photographs on their own phones, but we need the presentation first. Need the cup. So I'm presuming that it, the presentation is not going to be out in the middle of the pitch, but it's going to be over this way. Yeah, now someone's given them the message. They're coming over. That's what we want to see. And there they're coming over arm in arm. Apart from the captain, who's jumping for joy. That's Bree from Blinelli. And that's the subs all there with the Loretto banner on their backs coming over. We're edging towards the presentation. Bear with us. Donna Bogle on Facebook says, brilliant result, girls. Well done. And Anita Quinn says, well played on your stream. And there is the Loretto grammar team and subs, the whole panel there. Lots of smiles. They've really enjoyed this campaign. They've been so impressive. And they're lining up. The only thing is missing is the cup. But they're gonna get that in the next few minutes. And over to our left, Assumption are getting their photograph taken as well. So both teams getting their Pictures taken just before we have the presentation. Laura Rose Barkley Elliman has been messaging on Facebook throughout the game. Thank you, Laura. And she says, brilliant display of football from both teams. Well done to all the girls. Thank you for that. That really sums it up. That's a fair comment at the end of all this. Sorry about the disorganization here, but we're trying our best and uh, the organizers are trying their best to get everyone in place and around the cup here for the presentation, but Assumption are getting a photograph taken and the presentation is about to be made down in front of us. I did say a few minutes, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Andrea McCall says, well done and well played, Loretto. And hard luck to Orla and all the Assumption Grammar girls. Hold your heads high. A great achievement to make the finals. That's an excellent point. It is indeed. <laughs> girls don't mind the cold and the wind here. They can't wait to get their hands on the cup. Now, we're very near presentation time now. That's Ronan McCarthy there from Ulster Ladies, and he has organized all of these school events. I believe there's 27 competitions that he has had to organize, and now he's calling everybody the line. Loretto, you've 
deadly in front of goal. You took your chances and you took them well. So well done. Assumption, massive effort, and you didn't stop for the for the 60 minutes. So fair play is to the three cheers for the our for Assumption. <laughs> Firstly, before we do the presentation, we're going to do the player of the match. And again, uh, so many good players on the field today both individually and together. I think both goalkeepers were outstanding, so well done to both goalkeepers. <laughs> but, but for me, there, there was one player who just seemed to be everywhere. She seemed to cover every blade of grass, and a lot of the Red Oak chances came from her tackles and her movement and her passing. So the player of the match is on your screen. <laughs> Well done, Anya Strain from Oma St. Andes. Her dad, Larry, will be proud of her. Both left-footed players, both top quality. She's a Tyrone minor player, and her dad was a Tyrone under 21, and she is good player of the match, and deservedly so as well. Well done to Anya. <laughs> Anya with Kayleen there from the sponsors, MFC Sports was all over the pitch, as Ronan said. She was back in defence. She was up in the forwards. And just to be clear, my vote for a player of the so match was the unofficial one. But you can't argue with Anya. out with your clubs and your county teams. You, I'm sure you've a lot of under-14 players. Now we start in after the half-term. A lot of these break from the school again. Uh, Loretto, all the best in the All-Ireland semi-final, which is coming up in a few weeks' time. And <laughs> And Assumption, girls, you'll be back at it. I have no doubt I'll see you again next year. <laughs> I'll see you again at under 20 level. You're a fantastic squad, fantastic players, and I'm sure you're going to bounce back from this. So uh, I'll see you next year back at it. Can I redeem yourself? Can I have the captain, please? <laughs> Bree McBride from Glenelly gets the cup from Ronan McCarthy from Ulster Ladies who's organised some 27 schools competitions. Loretto Grammar have won this one. The Corn McNally an impressive new cup donated by Kalashja Oriel and won by Loretto Grammar from Oma in 2022. The MFC Sports Ulster Under 16 the winners.
What a brilliant speech there by Bree McBride from Glenelly. Loved by everyone here. And the best line of all was that she said that she enjoyed it. They enjoyed every minute. That's what it's all about. Smiles on all of those faces. And you see them now getting their photograph taken at the end now with the cup. Brilliant work being done on the school. Brilliant skills. And now they have a cup to match as well. And well done to everybody in the school. But Bree said it better than me. It's been an honour for us to live stream this game today. The first we have done in the MFC Sports Ulster Schools competitions. We hope we can do more because today has been fabulous football, fabulous skills out there from these young girls and fabulous scenes of celebration. And you can see what it means to her and to her school. She thanked just about everybody in the school because it is a big, big team effort. Well done to Loretto Grammer from Oma. Bad luck to Assumption Grammar from Ballinahinch in County Down, but they certainly did brilliantly to get here and put up a great effort on the day. So we commend both schools for getting here and Ulster Ladies for putting this competition on. We're off to Dublin. We are doing another live stream tonight. DCU against NUIG, which will be on the Ladies Football Facebook page later on. That in the Yopley O'Connor Cup. And that's for third level education. This is second level education. So it's all about education. It's all about the schools and the colleges today. We have done one half. We're off to do the other. And we leave you with those scenes of Loretto Grammar celebrating in Cookstown.